as we bring Lloyd Vance and does a good job covering the NFL, contributor reporter for the NFL Network. There are teams out there that are filling uh, their needs. Uh, Lloyd, always good to talk to you, my friend. Let's start with Jacksonville and how about what they've done thus far during free agency, getting a safety, getting a back, and obviously getting a pass rusher. Yeah, and what, and what they're doing there, Rich, is, is they had to get to the floor of the salary cap. They need to be in 89% of the cap, and right now they were very under it. And so they had a lot of money to spend, so they're bringing these guys in there. Now they have a running back to help out uh, their quarterback and their running back, Yeldon, that's there as well. And they're just a young team, and, and let's face it, in that division, uh, they can compete right away. So these are good yep. pieces for Jacksonville, and we'll see how they grow from there. No, that, I think that's actually an excellent point, the fact that they can contend right now. Uh, they bring in Ivory. He can uh, be another back, solidify that position with T.J. Yeldon, a solid young back. Uh, we mentioned Gibson, um, Jackson in a very winnable division. I, I made the point during the opening monologue, if you have the money, why not spend it? Look, the Giants, everyone knew, the Giants needed an overhaul on that defense. If anyone actually watched the NFL last year and all the games that they collapsed in the fourth quarter or down the stretch, you can't blame it on Spags because they had 24 players on the IR. He just didn't have the talent out there. He, he didn't. He just did not have – he had guys that really were playing out of position, uh, were practice squad players. So, yeah, to some extent, he's got some players now in Jenkins, in Harrison, and Vernon, so the pressure's on him. But I think more importantly, the pressure was on Jerry Reese to spend this money. I mean, you gotta, you got to feel, you got to wonder right now, Coughlin's probably sitting around fuming. If you gave me those defensive guys, we could have won some of these games last year. But how about the moves that the Giants made? Yeah, he made a great point there. Jerry Reese is the guy firmly on a hot seat. Yes, he was there during their last Super Bowl victories. But Tom Coughlin is gone, and now it's firmly on him to rebuild this team with McAdoo. And I did like what he did in terms of bringing in some guys that can help out a defense, as you were saying, very beat up last year. Olivier Vernon, a very underrated guy that can get after the passer. And then Janoris Jenkins, I just think he's going to do a great job on the outside. Let's not forget he has a University of Florida pedigree, got in some trouble there and went to a smaller school. But he is a big-time player, and I think he's going to grow as a coverage corner because he's not that old right now. Yeah, and he's also had six uh, six picks returned for touchdowns, and that's something last year when you go to the Carolina game, the Saint game, the New England game, a lot of short picks that were dropped uh, by the Giants. Probably spells the end for uh, Prince of Mukamura. A good player, never stayed healthy coming out of Nebraska. Um, they reworked the deal with Cruz. You knew he was going to take less money. I think actually the big move was Snacks Harrison because pro football focus rates him as the top the top run stuffer. Now you throw him in there with Hankins. Um, to me, you're talking about a team right now, you mentioned Spags, where if you can stop that run and you can get an assemblance of a pass rush, uh, bringing back JPP, that takes a lot more pressure off those secondary guys in those cornerback positions. So, And I think that's something that ultimately goes unnoticed. And that that's really, to me, that's where the, the, the Giants are going to uh, benefit from this because now you get some pass rush and you take some pressure off that secondary. Definitely, and that's Steve Spagnuolo's calling card. He wants guys that are going to get pressure on all the first three downs and then to bring the heat to get these guys off the field in three and outs. And he now has the guys that he can move around, bring them in and out, rotate them, and they're just fast balls that he's going to throw out a quarterback. And then he gets a shutdown corner that he needs to help his attacking style who can play on an island all by himself. So a lot of good news by the Giants as it, with anything you got to temper your enthusiasm until after the sure. draft, until they get the OTAs and minicamp. Yeah, it, you're right. You don't win the Super Bowls uh, in, in February, March. You don't win championships. All right, as far as the Eagles, you know, making making some moves, bringing in players to fit some holes. They brought in a linebacker. They were thin there. They brought in a couple of defensive backs as well. They make the move for Chase Daniel. I want to get your thoughts on the fact that they were able to basically jettison uh, Byron Maxwell, Kiko Alonso, and DeMarco Murray. I mean, again... At the end of the day, they got rid of some, some bad contracts and players that didn't want to be here, players that were off injured and didn't contribute. Yeah, you got to tip your hat to Howie Roseman in terms of getting rid of these guys that weren't his players, let's face it, trying to get rid of everything that has a Chip Kelly stamp. And I think Maxwell and maybe even Alonzo can ex succeed at other places, but they just did not fit what the Eagles are doing right now. Guys that didn't want to be there in terms of Murray as well, they didn't want to be on the team, so why even bring them back? Start anew. 
Uh, a lot of the faces that they're bringing in, a lot of the former Bills players are kind of key fill-in players, but let's face it, they're not front-line players. I think the Eagles are just trying to fill holes right now and then yeah. get ready for the draft. You know, moving up to eight, that was big for yep. them. And they probably can get a big tackle that they need, like Ronnie Stanley out of Notre Dame. And a lot of people are high on Stanley coming out of Notre Dame, as you just alluded to. Uh, one more point on the Eagles. Now that they signed Chase Daniel, I look at the money, and I think on the surface, I don't. that's not backup quarterback money, so to speak. So you, you, you probably venture to guess they'll save some money if they release Sanchez. He was making 5.5 as a backup. His time's drawing to an end. Now I think if they wanted to draft a quarterback, I don't think they are, but they have that potential to do that. But my question is, now that they bring in Daniel, and if he believes he's going to compete, and Doug Peterson's have been very high on this kid, we, we've heard him sing his praises for a while now, which, you know, you kind of laugh and you think, well, was there tampering going on? And I say tongue-in-cheek, um, you know, to keep talking about these players. But what about Sam Bradford? I mean, are all bets off right now? Is it possibility that the Eagles can turn around because they signed Daniel, they can be a little more creative at number eight, and they can turn around and say, hey, we might get some value for Bradford. Let's trade him because... We saw that Peyton Manning domino effect from once he retired and the way the quarterbacks are moving right now and some quarterbacks are going to get cut, release, not resign, trade it. It just seems like now, if anything, this would be the time where Roseman, Lurie, and Peterson would start making some calls possibly to Denver. I'm not going to say St. Louis, maybe to Cleveland. It just seems like it's not. I don't think it's as far-fetched as people think it is. Yeah, I, I'd say right now that it, it, they made Sam Bradford their guy, and he put this stamp on it with that $18 million a year that they've given him, and that kind of set the market for quarterbacks. It, it left guys like Ryan Fitzpatrick, Brock Osweiler saying, hey, they've paid Sam Bradford all that kind of money, and I'm better than him. I need to get that type of money as well. So I think right now the Eagles are on a ride or die with Sam Bradford. A, a lot of people, including me, don't agree that he's worth that type of money, and, and I think what they're going to do is kind of give him a one-year tryout and I think they, it's more cap-friendly next year if they would like to cut him. So uh, Chase Daniel in the fold with the Eagles, a guy who's kind of a caddy to Peterson, a guy who knows the system well, can work with him. And then I think you're right. They're going to bring in some kind of young quarterback into this scheme. Uh, I think it'll probably be a middle-round type of guy, mm -hmm. third, fourth-round guy, and then see what they have from there. Hey, look, they have the option to need. I still think they have to go tackle. And we've talked about that in nauseam the last month or so. If anything, you can get a quarterback at the third or fourth round. Um, as we stick with the quarterback position, we'll get to Osweiler in a moment. But how about Fitzpatrick? The guy had a career year. He's a journeyman quarterback. There's talk that if he doesn't get the money that he wants and commands or demands or he feels he uh, should deserve from the Jets, there's talk that he's going to retire. Listen, I can't fault him for wanting the money that he wants, but realistically to be fair he is not an 18 million dollar quarterback he had a great year everything fell into place but at the end of the year to be fair when they needed him the most he choked and he had those ill-advised picks and that's kind of been the mo with this guy throughout his career if anything do you think he resigns with the jets or do you think the jets maybe try to make a move for kaepernick or do you think fitzpatrick walks and he just signs yeah. with you know whoever else is out there Right, that, that's a great point, Keo. And, and I think in the end, Jimmy Sexton, who is his agent, he's kind of in a scary contest with the New York Jets. The Jets have firmly put an offer they think is fair on the table, probably around $15 million or so. And let's face it, a guy who's in his early 30s, been on about five football teams, they think that's more than enough. You talked about his difficulties at the end of the season. And I think in the end, they may be trying to price themselves out of the market because they're looking at that Bradford contract that I was talking about earlier. Uh, Fitzpatrick probably using that retirement as some kind of a ploy. And, he, and I think he will come down to the Jets' terms and they will resign him. But, you know, he's saying that there's not a lot of market out there for him. And I think that's what Bradford kind of saw as well. That's why he took that offer from the Eagles so quickly. And, and remember, you mentioned Jimmy Sexton, who's the agent for um, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, by the way, he's also the agent for Brock Osweiler. So think about this. Why would Denver really want to, uh, I'm going to say, you know, work again or have to do any type of dealings business-wise with him when basically his high-profile client, Brock Osweiler, just spurned them in Elway to go take a ton of money with the Houston Texans. So that kind of bears worth watching, getting into uh, Osweiler, a guy that's played seven games in his career, 
you know, I equated it to Scott Mitchell, what he was able to do years ago when Marino got hurt. Look, they substantially overpaid for Osweiler. Uh, this is more of a question, in your opinion. If if it doesn't work out, say, in two years with Osweiler, and he's inconsistent, uh, they're not making the playoffs, is that a move that really sets this franchise back, the Houston Texans, five to six years? Because they've never had stability at the quarterback position. Yeah, you're right, Q, and, and this is this is a move that Rick Smith, their general manager, he, he better make sure he's right because we saw Rod Graves make a mistake with Kevin Cobb out there with the Cardinals, and it led to him losing his job as general manager. So Brock Osweiler, Osweiler a guy, as you were saying, only seven games, five and two as a starter, not a huge body of work, but what they were really looking at was that Brian Hoyer performance in the playoffs. He was just awful with all his turnovers, and they needed somebody, so they went after a big, strong quarterback. And they hope he fits his scheme. I know with Miller coming there at the running back position, they're going to look to hand the football off, protect the ball, and let J.J. Watt and that defense dictate the pace of the game. So right now it looks like a good move, but if he starts turning the football over and doesn't look like the guy after one, two years, they definitely have set themselves back. And, and I think Bill O'Brien will probably get to Miami draft as well. Look for him to probably get Hackenberg later on in the middle tier of the draft or so couple minutes with Lloyd Vance. Does a great job covering the NFL, contributing to reporter for the NFL Network. 35 past the 1 o'clock hour on a Thursday. We are Chickies and Pete's, a Thursday edition of the warm-up. Right on 97.3 ESPN-FM. Colin Kaepernick now. Uh, re- multiple reports. Manish Mato covers the Jets. Has a pretty good keen uh, take on the Jets with the New York Daily News reporting that uh, there. that's the target for the Jets right now. Kaepernick. There's also a couple of reports out there. Denver's looking at him. Uh, and also Cleveland. Now, Elway likes strong-arm quarterbacks. The one thing about Kaepernick, say what you want, he's got a strong arm. Uh, wh- where, where do you think, if anything, the potential landing spot, if San Francisco would be open up to a trade and trading Colin Kaepernick, where would be the most logical uh, landing spot for him? Yeah, Q, it's interesting because Chip Kelly, I don't think, wants Kaepernick, but he knows that he's a chip in the game right now, and, and mm-hmm. I think he's kind of – feeling out there, looking at what different teams may want for him, and, and um, in the end, I just think Denver may be the landing spot, as you're alluding to. Kaepernick makes about $11 million a year. That would fit nicely in their cap, because let's face it, you got to pay more on Miller, and I think that they may work something out, maybe do uh, a second, third round draft pick, but they're working the phones hard right now. Denver's trying to play it cool. I know Elway's not showing his hand, but I think in the end, he knows that he needs a quarterback, because right now he doesn't have one. And Colin Kaepernick seems to be the guy. A fallback plan could be an RG3. Uh, last one before I let you get out of here. It, it's way too early to tell because we're about 24 hours removed. So, again, I don't sit here. I don't grade these moves. Um, I think if you can fill some needs, if you can ask yourself as a, as, a, as a franchise, are we better today than we were yesterday? If the answer is yes, then you've done your due diligence and you needed to do what you had to do. Um, do, you, do you foresee any other team... Uh, maybe trying to make a big spot. Like, for instance, Kaepernick going to the Jets or Denver. I think Kaepernick going to the Jets is more of a splash than, say, Kaepernick going to Denver because Denver doesn't have uh, a quarterback right now. They, they don't. They don't. Um, so where do you think the next big move, what, what team do you think is going to make that next big splash, so to speak? Because it seems like, you know, the cupboard's almost bare here with some of these free agents. Yeah, you know, it's, it's all the... All the teams that Stan Pat did just exactly that. The Patriots mm-hmm. didn't do a lot. The Green Bay Packers didn't do a lot. So they let all these guys fly up the board. Uh, the Steelers re-signed some of their guys. A player that's out there that I think could fit the Steelers scheme is Eric Weddle, a guy that, that's just a playmaking safety. They haven't had a guy since Troy, Troy Palomalo, and I could see them bringing him in fit in the scheme. Also, a guy like Chris Long, he's shopping himself around out there. He was in with the Redskins. He was with Dallas, and I think he's going to go check out the Bucks now. So as you're saying, a lot of these, um, about 20 and down free agents, you know, the top 20 have already pretty much come off the board, and we're going to see where these guys go. But in the end, OTAs and, and the draft are really going to show us everything. And listen, they all get over, they're overpriced, and they all get overpaid. I mean, come on, the money that Tampa gave to Doug Martin, that's ridiculous. But again, that's, yeah, the money, you're spending the money. Um, Brock Osweiler, I'm still shaking my head. I had a conversation with someone about this last night. They were just trying to encapsulate, just from a mathematics standpoint, the money. 
that he's earned. And, and you talk about the reps and the snaps and the throws and the completions. I mean, that's a ton of money invested in a guy that hasn't even had a cup of coffee in the NFL. And I'll tell you this in closing, and you tell me if you agree or not. I think it rubbed him the wrong way when they benched him in that San Diego game and they brought back Elway. No, no doubt about it. And, and Peyton going in there and, and winning the Super Bowl the way he did, he, he just didn't want to fall in a shadow. And, and there was an acrimony between him and John Elway. And, and then you have McNair on the other side with the Texans with his checkbook open, and he was more willing to take it. So, you know, we're going to see if he's the next Matt Flay, a guy who signed a big contract with Seattle, and it didn't work out. But it, to always remember, these NFL uh, contracts are not fully guaranteed. Most sure. Time. Yeah, 30 seconds, RG3 release. Where do you see him winding up, if any? You know, RG3, I, I think in the end you're going to see him with the Rams or maybe in the 49ers. That's going to be his land spot. Wow, if he goes to the Rams, think about this. It's just like in life. You know, sometimes you want to go A to B, but sometimes you have to cross over B to go to C, then to get back to B. So basically, think about what they did a couple of years ago with the trade for RG3, and everyone was hooting and hollering, the Rams fans. Well, guess what? Now be careful. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> if you wish what you, you know, to get what you wish for. So, all right, my friend, I know it's getting a little crazy. I appreciate you squeezing me in for a couple moments. Get back to work, and we'll talk next week. All right, Q. Thanks for having me on.